It is hard for people to believe that the works in the Kisson collection are coming from North Korea. North Korea is a country which is heavily uh, isolated from the rest of the world. People who first encounter the works in an exhibition are flabbergasted. They can hardly believe that that quality art and the subjects are coming from a country named uh, North Korea. Everything is due to the great leader. So the big leader is for them a god. You just have to fit in, in what is the, the ideal civilian for, for the regime. The public has a knowledge that uh, there is only propaganda art in North Korea. But I was always convinced that there was more than propaganda and it appeared that I was right and that one was able to find much more different works than only propaganda. The time span of my visits to North Korea were approximately seven years and in those seven years I managed to acquire a collection of almost 2,000 works of art. What is your job? My job is uh, basically to buy and sell art. But apart from that, I'm, I've always been more an art lover than an art dealer. And that is overall basically uh, the thing that I've been doing all my life. The main works of the Caisson collection uh, consists of landscapes, portraits, animals. Uh, the, the, the craftsmanship of the top-level artist is, is of an, such a an high level that it's uh, yeah, almost hard to, to imagine. I grew up in a small village in the north of Holland in a big family of seven children. We had a good upbringing in a stable family. I think uh, I was different because I had a wider uh, interest in things more than sport, football. and I got interested in, in, uh, in, in antiques. When I was 14 or 15 years old, I bought my first things from an antique dealer in, in uh, Zandam. From the money I earned by working in the fields as a, as a youngster. Yeah, trading professionally uh, started around my, my 20th. Well, my, my, my first uh, step as, as, as a professional dealer was uh, when I started uh, traveling to England to buy uh, antiques and, and art, which I took back to Holland and was selling to the trade. And, and yeah, my biggest adventure protocol is when, when I started going to, uh, to Russia. Yeah, I came into a world which has always fascinated me because there was very little known about uh, Russia and, and Russian people. Then the moment I got the, the opportunity to, to, to go over there, I grabbed it with both hands and, and came to uh, to explore that secret world. I've lived in Moscow for a while. I got into a lot of adventures. I found a very important uh, collection of art which was stolen from the museum in Bremen. I ended up in, in a world uh, where you could find uh, risks. And of course, I, uh, I, uh, during, uh, during my, uh, my staying in, in Russia, I, I got into contact with uh, important painters and collections. Uh, a fascinating time.
I thought, what is there still to be explored where basically few people or nobody has ever been able to explore and to find things? And from, from the Russian story, I, I ended up with North Korea. I thought that is a, that is a world which is totally unknown and I, I thought, well, listen, if, if there are 24 million people over there, you, you have to be able to find good quality art. And I started trying to find ways to, uh, to get uh, permission to, to go over there and, and explore, which was quite hard. Because as a tourist, you can basically book a trip over there and, and go there. But your life will be very, uh, very limited over there because everything will be organized. You cannot step out of your hotel. Uh, every visit is, is pre-organized and, and they show you exactly what they want to show. And further on, you have no freedom. You cannot do anything. And that was one thing I wanted to avoid. I wanted to, to go where I wanted to go and to see things that I wanted to see. And that took, uh, that took quite a bit of time. You, uh, you are astonished by it. It's, it, is an, it is an unreal world if you start traveling in North Korea and you pass villages and, and small towns. To see the daily life over there is, is for us uh, bizarre. There is a regime uh, which exploits their power into uh, fear for people, mistrust. People are like uh, robots, almost. Only when you get to know them and, and you're sitting with them, you, you, you find out that they are like you and me. Uh, there's no difference. They have a feeling for humor. They, uh, they can tell jokes. Uh, they are like perfectly normal people. Only they live in the, in the wrong country. When it comes to uh, opinions or, or the way that you think, then we have enormous differences. And that is, that, that is the difference in between them and us. We are raised in, in, in freedom. You have your opinion, I have my opinion. They all have the same opinion because they are strongly influenced by other people to form themselves uh, a general opinion. All the people have the same opinion for an ideal society. They think they have an ideal society which they don't, but it's their opinion that they live in, 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 in the most fantastic country in the world. That's how they are being raised. At the time when I was there, I met the most uh, prominent painters of, of Korea. Uh, without exception, they were, uh, they were all quite aged. These people were uh, uh, honored with medals from, from the dictators and, and, and they had images where they were posing with a great leader, which made them very proud, of course. I met all these people personally and, and yeah, became friends because I was an interesting uh, man to meet for them and uh, yeah I was intrigued by uh, by their uh, by their works and by their uh, skills well they have basically two uh, two techniques and that is uh, oil painting and, and water painting in water painting you have a technique that they call uh, a one stroke technique which uh, uh, which basically consists of uh, a painter holding a brush, picking up the water paint and put it on the paper in one stroke. That stroke has to be perfect. 
paintings are very, very detailed. You can imagine how difficult that is if, if and concentrated you have to be, because if, if there is a, the, the smallest mistake, then the work are, uh, are going to be thrown away. And, and in an oil painting, you, you, can, you, can, uh, you can repair or you can change. Or in watercolors, you, you, you can't uh, repair anything. Well, the general uh, way of, of, of painting in North Korea is, is based on, uh, on naturalism. And the first uh, dictator made a rule that people who uh, create art should only create art that looks like it looks in real life. So a tree should look like a tree. A painting from Picasso would be considered no art. Like, for instance, if, if, you, if you have to judge or make a decision on a portrait, the first thing you look at are the hands. The hands are most difficult to paint. If the hands of a portrait are not correct, the painting is not good, whatever the quality of the face. If the hands are not like they should be, then forget about your portrait. So these are small details that, that, that you look at, and that also makes, uh, makes it easy to make a quick judgment about, for instance, we are talking about a portrait. This is the only painting in the collection that I specially ordered. It was a, a painter I met in, uh, who was working in, in a gallery. He didn't speak any English at all, so he communicated, he tried to communicate with me and always when I met him he had the same gesture and that was you, me, plane, and fly out. He always wanted me to invite him to come to Holland or England. Or, so that was his, uh, his, his, his great wish. And uh, he was such a nice, talented guy. So I, I, I explained to him, I said literally to him, I said, if you make what I ask you to make, and I had photos from buses, they always intrigued me because there were always enormous lines of, of people who wanted to go on a bus. And those people standing and waiting, I mean, the faces were like thunder. Uh, and you could see when the, the bus was filled up, people were packed on each other. And staring out of the window, I took pictures. And I said to that young painter, I said, if you paint this like you see it on the photo, I said, I will make you world famous. Only buses with people. And here you come back to the, uh, to, to the freedom of an, uh, an, an artistic person. I think, I think he didn't dare to really paint what you could see on the photograph, which was people looking not so happy, but uh, more or less in, in, in a bad mood or, or sad or whatever. So he painted a version with people that you see on a lot of pictures from there, and these are happy people and smiling. And, and so he missed the bus, to say so. Well, part of the collection has uh, made quite, quite big travelings. Uh, the first, the first traveling was to Vilnius. We organized an exhibition, I think, with some, don't know exactly, with some hundred works, or, and um, it became the most visited and successful exhibition ever held in, in the existence of, of the National Museum over there. There were approximately 55,000 uh, visitors 
which, which for such a small country is, is, is amazing. After Vilnius, the same collection exhibited in Vilnius has been transported to Riga, where it was uh, exhibited in the National Museum in Riga. And from Riga, we, uh, we traveled to uh, Seoul in South Korea, where uh, a bigger exhibition took place, where we exhibited uh, something like 150 works. Uh, we, we got an enormous uh, media attention in, in Seoul uh, because it was a unique event where uh, South Koreans could basically admire the work of their brothers and sisters in, in, in the north. I mean, there was not one magazine or, or uh, newspaper that didn't write about us. New York Times, Washington Post, Huffington Post, you, you name it. We were mentioned the most important and, and event in, in the country at that time, at that period. All my trips that I made to North Korea were in a time span of approximately seven years. And each trip made me enable to get deeper in the art world than comparing to my, my first trip. I think the, the things that impressed me most is, is, is the, the, the people I met during the, the whole adventure. I, I closed a lot of people in my, my heart. And that for me was the, the most special thing along the whole journey. I think by uh, collecting this uh, yeah, am am amazing collection of works, I think I, I do uh, have an uh, attribution to, uh, to the world of art. I'm convinced of it. And why is that? Because I think that one day it will be considered uh, an important uh, cultural inheritance from North Korea.